Multiplay 3.0 Tutorial 5 Control Cues. So control cues are used to act upon other cues in the cue list and have different things happen to those like fade out a cue, fade in a cue, change the pan, or various other things that you can do to affect those cues. So let's take a look here. I've chosen to color code my control cues pink so that I know that they are control cues in here. So I've actually inserted some control cues in here. Uh, this one I've labeled pause audio. If we take a look at it and I go to the control tab, you can see that the action I've chosen is to pause a cue. And what cue am I pausing? The previous cue. You can do that or you can actually select the particular cue as the cue number and the uh, description. You can select that particular cue rather than just going with previous cue. And it's coming from the main cue list and not the ad, ad lib list. So when I activate this cue, if this cue is playing, it's going to pause it. And then this uh, control cue down here is set to resume. Now, in this case, I gave it the target. I told it that it's the Q13 track 60 moon cue that's playing. That's the one that I want to resume. So I can have this playing back. We'll start here. Pause it. And then resume it. All right. And there's a lot of other options. Let's take a look at the menu here under control. And as you choose certain options, other parameters may become evident. For example, if I request a volume change, it's going to ask me, you know, what cue, previous cue, or I can target a specific cue, and I can change my volume here, and I can also put in the amount of time. So rather than being an immediate jump to that volume change, I can have it gradually fade to that volume fade. And then there's a, uh, the choice also to do a relative fade. And we can also choose that at the end of this fade, we can actually do a stop at end. So if you wanted to have a cue where it fades the volume out totally, you could drag that all the way to the end, down to minus 60 dBs, and just give it a fade time and say stop. So when it finishes doing the fade, it would actually stop that file from playing. So as I said, there are other parameters that may become evident as you make your action changes here. Uh, pan changes, same idea. You can move the pan left or right and it gives you a fade time and a relative fade for that. Uh, speed, tempo, pitch change, same thing. Fade all previous would fade any cues that came before this control cue. So if you were doing a layered thing, say with like rain and lightning and wind that's layered, instead of doing an individual fade for each of those wave files, you could simply do a fade all previous control cue and that would fade any cues that are currently playing back it would fade those out exit loop if you chose this if you are playing a loop so the preview the audio file that you're dealing with is looping you can tell it to exit the loop so on the next available time that it goes through the loop it would go past the stop point and continue playing to the end of that particular cue so that comes in handy if you want to loop the beginning of a cue, say to give the actor some extra time to do something on stage or to move some set pieces, but then you want the cue to continue after that little loop section, you can use this control cue to say exit the loop, you send it that message and it gets out of the loop and then moves on and plays the rest of the audio cue. So that can be useful for that. Uh, set position, you can set the position uh, of the start of the file. It's the way to set the start position for a particular wave file that's going to play back. If you haven't actually done that in the uh, queue itself, that can be set that way. And there's a from the start or from the end, there's different choices. Then you type in hours, minutes, seconds, and then milliseconds to set that. You have a stopwatch start, stop, and reset. Uh, you can use that if, and, uh, if you have your stopwatch up as part of your screen display here. Say you're just interested in timing a certain section of the show, you could put in this cue 
and that would automatically do that in case you're in rehearsal and you forget to click on your stopwatch and say you know I'm just gonna put a stopwatch start and stop cue in here um, if it's a section of the show that you're always trying to work that to get that a little bit quicker and you could time it and the director asks, you know hey how many um, how long is that particular segment how long did it take us to get through that and then you'd actually have a, a stopwatch timing there say oh we have an exact timing here okay comes in handy for that Q fade this would use the fade time that's set in your show priorities or your show setup. It uses that particular fade time to fade out a cue. I think the default here is about five seconds. Fade all others is an interesting command. It fades out all other cues that might be playing except for the target cue that you point out. So uh, say again, we have our rain, uh, thunder, and when you could fade out the thunder and when and just have the rain continue okay so it would fade out all the others and you would select your rain cue as being the one that's going to continue but fade out all the others audio trigger enable audio trigger disable that's something you probably will never need when you're doing the show